So, it is carnival right now. And even though I'm not in costume yet, I just went and picked up some things that are very, very important. I just went and bought a kilo of mint, some bread rolls, and of course, some Berliners. Now, these are very important if you're going to celebrate Carnival, at least for my family. I'm about to break into a Berliner. I'm going to show you how it tastes, get down to it. Uh, but I'm going inside because I'm a little bit cold. <laughs> so, what is a Berliner? It's basically, when you translate it, they call it a donut. Now, yeah, I don't necessarily consider it a donut, even though I guess when they fry it, it's very similar to a donut. Uh, but it's powdered sugar on top, and inside of it, they have marmalade, they have jelly. I will break it, I'm gonna just take a bite of it. <laughs> hmm. Do you see the marmalade inside of it? There's so many different types of Berliners. This is not a carnival thing, you can buy them year round, but people do enjoy these around carnival as well as New Year's. I think for New Year's, you can buy one with alcohol baked inside. But of course, I don't drink alcohol, so. <laughs> I'm eating the more traditional one with the powdered sugar on top. They have others with glaze on top, but I'm, I'm sticking with tradition. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now I'm all about the eating on carnival <laughs> there's so many deliciousness to it and you know it's crazy because as we prepare for the fasting that's coming up for the people that actually fast you're really supposed to indulge yourself you're supposed to go all out you're supposed to eat that's why they have so many goodness that's why they have all these different types of food that you're that's available. Because if you prepare for the fasting, which we're going to talk about the history in a second, um, yeah, you really want to indulge yourself. And that's why I'm... Mm. <laughs> mm. Let's talk about some traditions as I'm eating a Peichen, Burgish a Peichen. Um, there's, every day has a special tradition. And it all ends on Ash Wednesday. Basically, Ash Wednesday is a day, in a sense, from what I gather, from my lack of knowledge, is everything basically burnt down. Everything comes crashing down. It's a little bit sadness because carnival season comes to an end and you prepare for your fast. I keep talking about that. You prepare for your 40 days of fasting if you're religious like I am. I don't know the Tuesday before it is. Um, Monday is probably the biggest day, Rose and Montauk. That's where you have the biggest parades in Cologne. There's one in Dusseldorf, the one in Leverkusen. Uh, and there's also different forms of carnival celebrated in other parts of the regions of Germany. I think they call it Fast Fastnacht or uh, something else. I'll write them down at the bottom. But carnival is mainly celebrated in Cologne and Dusseldorf, this area, the Burgish Lorraine area. But like I said, in other regions, they might call it something else. Um, it all started yesterday on Thursday. Crazy Thursday, I just read what it's called, but for us Germans, what I call it for me included, it's called Viber Fastnacht, or Viber Fastnacht. And Viber stands for women, or like an old word for women. Fast, fasting, knocked is night. And so Thursday is basically the day of the woman. They can do whatever they want in a sense. I believe the story goes somewhere in Bun. The legend is, is that the ladies that were cleaning up all the costumes, that do all the clean, all the clothes cleaning for everyone in Cologne in the area, they also want to celebrate carnival, but had to work. So basically they went on strike and didn't do all the cleaning like they were supposed to do. <laughs> and it caused a huge uproar 
Because these women striked and caused all these men to panic because they didn't have their costumes, they didn't have their clean clothes, and this strike is now celebrated. It's been 200 years, actually, since this legend occurred. And, um, yeah, so what you normally see is on Thursdays, if you're wearing a tie, which I've never seen anybody come up to a random stranger, but the women will actually come and cut your tie. <laughs> Um, normally they do that traditionally in the rat house. It's a huge tradition. Like I said, I don't think people can just go up to random strangers and do it. If you get some women drunk enough, they will. But basically women have to run into town on Thursday. They can do whatever they want. So that's the beginning of carnival. Um, Friday is a little bit more relaxed. You see a lot of people going back to work as normal. Um, or they're preparing for the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, it's something going on every day. If you're in Cologne, there's a party going on every day. If you step outside of Cologne or Dusseldorf, you'll realize there's not really much going on. But if you're inside of Cologne, there's something going on every day, probably every hour. And you, if you, it doesn't, it's not hard to find some form of celebration. Um, I'll probably go to Cologne and join into the festival. But right now, I'm just going to prepare here, get things ready for a small party here today. Um, and just prepare for the next day. Saturday, we're going to a parade in another part of Germany. Uh, a more localized, smaller parade in my community. And then, of course, on Monday, we're going to wear it down. So let's get to some things, some traditions that you can and cannot do. All right. So let's make sure that you know some ground rules. And it really depends on where you are located. If, especially around the time of year. If you're in Cologne, drink Kirch. That's the traditional Cologne beer. It's called Kirch. And if you're in Dusseldorf, drink their beer. They call it pits, I believe. And then they have a yekin roof, a call out that you make. In Cologne, we say, Allah. And all the surrounding areas that, that are on the Cologne side, we say, Allah. Curla Allah. 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 In Dusseldorf, they say, Hello. Please, please do not get those two mixed up. I know some people might try to make a joke out of it and say, Hello in Cologne or Allah in, in Dusseldorf. Don't do it. Most people probably just look at you stupidly, but there are some crazy people, especially when they get drunk. If you do it in the, in the wrong time, the wrong place, drink the wrong beers, and the wrong chance, it can get pretty ugly. So don't do it. Just respect those traditions. Something else you might see, they call it a butchton. I think I'm saying this right, butchton, butchton. And it's like a kiss on the cheek that sometimes women will give to the guys uh, as a sign of good luck. Like I said, normally would not come up to a random person, but it could happen, especially if you dress up in a costume. Um, but yeah, respect those two traditions before you go any further. Make sure you know what you're doing and where you are. Now, let's talk about some traditions. Right now, this is the probably the height of a rivalry is going to happen in Germany. The rivalry between Dusseldorf and Cologne. And earlier as mentioned, make sure you say the right things. Just be aware of some of these traditions that are going on, the Cologne side versus the Dusseldorf side. Who celebrates Carnival the best? Don't try to get part of the conversations. And it might even get crazy enough, don't ask <laughs> any of your friends from Dusseldorf to come to the Cologne side and the Cologne people to come to the Dusseldorf. Some people take it too serious. It's all fun and games, but just be aware of where you are. Now, the other thing I want to speak on are the Zitzungen. These are special events that go on around Cologne time. Every year I have been to a, one of these events except for this year. And <coughs> they really do a great job of highlighting the differences between <coughs> different groups. Um, if you go to a Zitzung or one of these special events in Cologne, they're going to talk about Dusseldorf people all the time and, and how they're different. And if you go to one specifically just for men, because they do break it down, they might have one for kids, they might have one just for women, they might have one just for men, they might have one for couples. It's just all the different events that they have that surround the carnival. And everyone I've been to was always like it was very, very heavily talking about Dusseldorf. And also very, very political. One thing that the Germans do around this time of the year are talk or criticize political figures 
and the events that are going on around the world. Nothing is really off limits. And they're going to add that into the coming stick, and it's, they're going to also add that to the parades. You will see political figures displayed on certain, on certain, um, what do you call them, floats, because they are going to mention that stuff what's going on. And I like that. It's respectful, but at the same time, they're critical. Um, and they're critical of their own. They, <laughs> I think what's interesting about Germany compared to America is that a lot of times the Democrats are critical to Republicans and the Republicans are critical of the Democrats. Well, here in Germany, it's like the people are critical of their own people that they voted for because they have high expectations for the person they voted for. And when that person does not perform as the way they think they should, they're going to criticize them. And so you will see a whole lot of satire and you will see a whole lot of comedy. Um, let's talk about the last thing. The model every year, I don't care what the actual model is, but the truth is Carnival is all about coming together and love and uh, respect. Everyone come together. And uh, I love that model. I love that it's all about love. I love that it's all about celebrating. It's all about finding our differences. If you listen to the Carnival music, which is, I'm going to point out my favorite songs in the next part, um, it's about coming together. However, I, maybe because it's a language barrier, maybe because it's a cultural barrier, but I don't see many non-Germans or mainly non-Europeans celebrating Carnival. Uh, I do see other people from other countries because they have something, some form of connection with that maybe they have done a better job of uh, becoming part of the German culture. But then more people like me, I don't really see us joining in. So my call out to all my German people out there, if you see someone like me that is interested in your culture, invite them. Invite them to a Herrenzitzung or a Damenzitzung. Invite them out, not just to parades, not just to the club to drink, but really get them involved in the culture. Because I think is what makes my life in Germany so much better is that I am involved in German culture. I'm learning its history. I'm actually going to these certain events. Now, but I will say this too, be ready to translate. <laughs> if you go to a Herrenzitzung in Cologne and they start speaking that Platt Deutsch, that Kirch, half of Germans don't even understand when, when people speak this Platt Deutsch. And it's not just in Cologne. Every part of Germany has their own special language. It's, it's as bad as American Ebonics. <laughs> but it's celebrated here in Germany. We don't really celebrate Ebonics uh, in America, but it's celebrated. And when these comedians get into that special language, oh, it's tough. It's tough for even me to listen to. I, I don't understand it. I, my father-in-law, not my father, my father-in-law, my uncle, and my brother-in-law, they all have to translate for me, explain to me exactly what the comedian said. I laugh alone, but a lot of times I don't get it until somebody tells me exactly what he's talking about. Then I'm like, oh, okay, I got that. I got that. Now, when people say Germans are not very funny, that's a myth. That can be very, very hilarious. <laughs> you just got to make sure you understand the context. A lot of times it's locked in context. If you understand the context, you would not understand the joke. Um, so what are some songs I love? Number one song probably of all right now is Kölscher Jung by Brings. Number two is um, Start mit K uh, by Kasala. Uh, number three for me is Guten Morgen Bob Rosaplatz by Queer Beats. Um, man, number four, probably another one by Kasala. Um, let me see. Ali Glazer Hoch. I think Lees or Hook, however you pronounce that. And then uh, it's all about celebrating. And the number, I mean, the last song on my list, and this actually, I think people will, many people disagree because it's actually it is a football song. And it's, I won't, it's a sports song. It's about Cologne. <laughs> and the LC Clone hymnal, like their football team song. I had, I was at a Heritage song in a Hewner. There's a group that sang it. And, oh, man, it made me stand up. I'm not even a fan of Cologne at all. But that song, when I heard that song sung, it made me stand up. And it made me start to actually consider, what is the best 
sports song from any part of the world. Now, of course, I've never heard them all, but I know America has some bangers, and now I know Germany has some bangers. And I know that England, they, they sing this one song at this one football game all the time. And I'm going to make a list specifically about which one I think is the best song. But I'm going to tell you something. This clone is up there. <laughs> it's definitely up there. It made me stand up and sing along. And I'm not even a fan of the FC Cologne. But it was a, it was a, it was a hit. Uh, so, yeah, those are my top five songs. So, if there's anything else you know about Carnival, you need to look it up. But this is how what I know, and these are things that I like. And with that, I'm signing out. Everybody, enjoy your Carnival weekend. Enjoy Mardi Gras if you're in America. Enjoy Carnival if you're in Brazil. Bottom line, have a good time. Don't do anything too stupid and be safe. Allah.